I am back with another possible marker paper that isn't actually a marker paper. I saw another artist on YouTube watercoloring with Tombow markers on matte photo paper and I was like, that is crazy. I never thought of that. So um, I got the cheapest matte photo paper I could on Amazon, which was like nine bucks, including shipping. And um, I got 50 sheets of it. So if I don't like it, I'm sure I'll find some other use for it, even if it's just printing out a few of my favorite photos. Um, and it is Canon 8.5 by 11 matte photo paper, and I got 50 sheets. So I haven't even opened it yet. I wanted to share it. With you guys, since we're doing kind of like this big marker paper mega challenge. And if you're a fan of my marker paper mega challenge, one way that you can ensure that it keeps updating is by backing my Patreon. Um, so I am removing. Whoa, wait, okay. All right, so that's a piece of cardstock to protect the marker paper. It is a good thing I was like, that didn't feel right. And it is very matte. It is more matte than what she was using. But that's cool because even if I don't like it for markers, it honestly should be pretty cool for prints. So I am gonna move some things out of the way and pull out a few markers and get going. Show you guys um, some pre preliminary tests, sort of like what I did on the acetate. So I'll be right back. All right guys, I'm back and I think I have everything. Let's go over it together. I've got alcohol-based markers. These happen to be Copic Sketch markers. I've got a couple of alcohol marker blenders, uh, Prismacolor and Blick Studio, to be precise. I've got a handful of Windsor and Newton's brand new pigment markers, as well as the white blender and the colorless blender. I've got some pit pins, which are India ink, and they are permanent once dry, but they're water-based, so you're gonna wanna use a water-based blender, like actual water or a Tombow ABT. And I've got three Zig Art and Graphic Twins, which are also water-based, but they are not permanent once dry. So, um, let's get cracking. So let's get started with the alcohol markers, since that tends to be the marker that everyone really cares about the most. Now, this marker paper is really the most, I mean, it's not marker paper, I'm sorry, this photo paper. It is just the most unusual photo paper, um, because there's like no surface to it. Um, so I might end up having to test a couple of matte photo papers to really... Oh, wow. Do you see that? Do you see that area of resist where I'd, um, here. Do you guys see that area of resist between, um, where I'd put down a color and then... Let me do that again for you guys so we can... All right, so that's the original color, right? Now, here is the next layer. All right, okay. Now, you see that right there? That's like an area of resist. I have never had alcohol markers that did an area of resist quite that, that stark, that, um, what's the word am I looking for? That distinct, quite that distinct. Now, here is a Blick colorless blender, and you can blend it. And not only can you like push the marker back, but it blends on this paper kind of like a water-based marker. So that's interesting. Let's try it with the Prismacolor in a slightly different color. So yeah, it definitely does something I've never seen before with alcohol markers. Um, so let's do a test where we put it down and we let it dry for a while. And I ought to be making notes about all this because if I don't, I will forget. And I want to be able to use this as a reference sheet. So, okay. All right, fine. Let's see how well these all blend into each other. 
So we've got that area of um, resist going on. Now I'm going to blend back into the color, which is what I normally do. So it's not really pushing the marker to the back of the paper the way um, alcohol markers typically tend to go. So it's hitting something. There's, I mean, there's clearly a coating on the page. I can feel a matte coating on the page. And there's only so far you can go with the marker. Uh, let's also see how it layers. So we're going back to where I let the marker dry and it's dry. So if it's dry, it takes some scrubbing to get it to blend. This is a thirsty feeling paper. It like feels like it's got like a finish on it, like gesso maybe. Okay, so we're gonna put another layer of cadmium red on top of this dry. So there is some intensity of color building up. And I gotta let that dry. And when it's no longer cool to the touch for alcohol markers, when alcohol markers are no longer cool to the touch, that's how you know they're fully dry. And it's actually taking a little longer than So you can get about, it looks like three layers of color. Um, and I'm pretty sure the next layer isn't really gonna do much. So alcohol markers ex behave very unexpectedly on this, this particular matte photo paper. I haven't tested enough matte photo papers to be able to definitively say. And I have, um, actually I have some shiny photo sticker paper that I might be pulling out for a different test and it's, it's not expensive sticker paper it's fairly cheap sticker paper so let's move on i should label this now let's move on to the pigment markers i'm gonna do some color to color blending with the chisel nib because that's what i got and it takes a minute to soak into this paper Ooh. And it feels scrubby. Does that make sense? Uh, when I say scrubby, I mean I can feel the nib scrubber, scrubbing on the paper. Now, I guess we need to try blending between two colors, not just layering. But I kind of feel it when I put the wet on top of the wet, I can kind of feel it picking up the color. Ooh. That's interesting. Although, look at all the schmutz. Let's see if I can get to focus. No. My uh, pigment marker seems to be picking up some schmutz and it's taking a while to dry. Let's see if I can get it to reflect. So that is a thing. Oh, and for reference, the alcohol marker bleeds through pretty quick. That doesn't bother me. I'm used to it bleeding through. I'm used to being a pain in the booty. All right, let's try some blending. First with the colorless blender while wet. And I got a hustle. Ooh, look at, wow. I'm gonna have to zoom in so you guys can see that. All right, see that? That's where the marker, the blender marker scrubbed away the pigment from the, um, the red that I just put down. So something about the coating on this paper. Now let's try out the white blender. I do love how velvety though the pigment markers look. Oh yeah, look you get a fair amount of blending and it's not necessarily doing the scrubbing that the blender marker was doing. Honestly, the blender marker for these, not even a fan. I'm gonna let this dry and I'm gonna try to do another layer on the white, just, just to see, because um, this paper is really interesting with the pigment markers, um, other than like, a little bit of scrubbing with the blender, but I'm not really a fan of their blender anyway, so I'm not all that disappointed. So let's move on to the pit pins. 
Mm, I did oranges on my last test, the acetate test. So let's do, let's do greens. Or actually, I just got some beautiful blues. So I'm going to do those instead. And at some point, I'm going to make it a reward tier. Ugh, I don't like how that sounds. I'm going to make it a reward tier for you guys to be able to unlock these scans. Ugh. One layer is fine. Two layers is not. As soon as I do the third layer, I will... Actually, it evened out. I thought I was going to scrub away. Hey, like, they really want to act like they're dry on this paper, and they're not. They're brand new. I know they're not dry, and they work just fine on other papers. So that's pit pin so far. And look, you get a little bit of blending right there. Um, they just don't necessarily put down enough ink. I know I have the big brush markers, so I will grab those. And we'll put down more ink and we'll be able to tell what's going on. That lays down a lot more ink. So we can better tell. Now, we're getting the same resist color that we got with the alcohol markers. Where there's a little area where it like... Well, it makes a resist, basically. But what's interesting with these is that it actually helps. Um, it seems like you have more tones than you actually do. This seems like its own marker. That seems like its own marker. So maybe this paper is a good way to, to sort of cheat if you don't have like a big collection. Oh, goodness. I'm sorry. I, I just love this kind of stuff. And I get excited thinking about it because I'm a big dork. So let's try blending back and forth with the pit pens because they are not really known for their ability to blend back and forth on most papers. Um, I can do it on vellum and I can do it on Yupo, but I haven't had much luck on other stuff. And the trick is to do it while they're wet. They blend. What? How interesting. <laughs> Sorry, I know. That's really cool though. Uh, I gotta make a note about that. Now, I'm probably not going to be able to do that with the teeny little these tips because they're probably too small. They're probably not putting down enough ink. So in order to properly test the properties, I'm probably going to have to get some skin tones in the big brush. Oh, it never ends, does it? Oh, I can always justify buying new toys. All right, so let's try the Tombow ABTs with these. Speaking of new toys, it's about time for a new Tombow ABT. Oh yeah, look, look, look. If you scrub too much, like I'm doing, you will flake off the paper surface. It doesn't pill, it just flakes. Now, I wonder if that's an issue when it's dry, but I have a, I'm not getting good blending. I'm not getting good colorless blender blending results with any of these when they're dry, which is fine. I mean, like I'm getting such interesting results with just layering color uh, that I'm not really persnickety about that. I just think it's important to note because, you know, at a later date, I might be trying to do some blending and I might not be able to and I might be really disappointed. So let's use the water brush. That is pretty okay. Look at, look at all that. And this is not a paper designed for water. Uh, but it's, it's doing okay. I mean, I'm gonna have to do some layers to see if it tears up the paper any. All right, so um, another thing I need to test is with alcohol marker. Because sometimes they'll work and sometimes they won't. And it's still full of red from the, the, the prior alcohol marker test. 
It's like so full of red. I don't know if I'll get the red out. I guess it's out. <laughs> but like every time I, I like go to mix up the gray, it puts that red back in. So who knows? And let's try it with the ethanol based colorless blender from the pigment markers. Yeah, look, it's, see it's tearing up the paper, but it kind of blends it. So I can see how that other artist was able to do watercolor on a map photo paper. Um, it wouldn't be my personal first choice, but I could see how it worked. Um, it's, this has got like, um, you can see it when it's wet. Let me see if I can get it. It sparkles like, um, you can just barely see it. It's like a, like a clay finish on the paper. And I'm sure it captures the ink and it prints like just gorgeously. Like, I'm sure that's why it's there. It's just something I notice. All right. Sick art. And... All right. So these are water based. They are not, um, oh, they're not permanent the way, um, pit pins are. So we're getting another resist. Sorry for those, if, if you have like vertigo or if this makes you dizzy or sick, my apologies. I'm trying to capture it and I'm also trying to do it quickly and I'm sorry. All right, let's try blending in between the colors. So not so much. Um, I mean, it does make the original color a little bit darker, which makes it seem like it's blended, which is, that's fine. These are probably gonna be another marker that don't really like the Tombow ABT. No, these are okay. They, oh, see, I got a little bit of flaking, but honestly, that's the equivalent of like any other paper pilling a little bit from just scrubbing at it, you know? If you scrub any paper while it's wet with enough force, you're gonna start to abrade the surface. That's weird because these are not water. These are water soluble. You can pretty much watercolor with these on any other surface, but water brush on this particular paper, nope. And look how much the pit pin, oh, the pit pin moves so much and this doesn't move at all. How weird. So I've got two other blenders I want to test with this the alcohol, and I'm gonna go with the Blick, cause the, Ugh, gross. So it's not moving. Wow, that's so weird. Cause it's pulling, it's separating the pigment or the, it's separating the dye. That's what it's doing. Because when I scrub this, it's like a pink color, a hot pink color comes out, but like, when I clean it to the side, nothing's coming out. So it must be like chewing up. Wow, that's weird. All right. Oh yeah, it immediately started tearing up the paper surface and I'm getting that same weird pink color. It doesn't show up as pink to you guys, but to me, it's definitely pink. So one last thing before I go, my pigment opaque white is dry. So I wanna put another layer on top to see how well this handles that. And it's doing pretty okay. So, um, this matte photo paper, pull out and up. This matte photo paper is really weird as a marker paper. I'm going to have to think about this because I think I can do alcohol markers. I th definitely think I can do something. I don't know what, but something with pit pen, I mean, uh, pigment markers and pit pins seem to handle pretty well on it too. Um, and I mean, the art and graphic twins, they put down, it looks like velvet. Like it's so, it's so intense, but I can't, I can't blend it with anything. So um, I'm going to have to think about that for a while. But this was really exciting and I need to totally link that other YouTuber for you guys. So you can check out her stuff. Um, 
she was doing a demonstration of painting with Tombow ABTs using a water brush on uh, matte photo paper, which kind of just blew my mind. Uh, <laughs> I know it doesn't take much, I guess. Anyway, so um, if you guys enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave, you give me a like, you like the video. Um, it helps YouTube find helps other people on YouTube find my content, shows up in more feeds, shows up higher in the rankings. You'd be really helping me out a lot. If you like videos like this, if you thought this was cool, if you are totally interested in marker paper, marker compatibility, you should subscribe to this channel because not only am I doing a bunch of paper tests, and I have been doing a bunch of paper tests, but I do a bunch of other kind of art supply stuff as well. I do reviews, I do tutorials, I do demonstrations, I do overviews of products. I do all kinds of stuff. Um, and the third thing you guys can do to help me out, and this is a big one, is you can consider subscribing to that Patreon I mentioned at the beginning of the video. And here's a card for that right now. Um, if you contribute to my Patreon, you are helping me purchase new materials to uh, review because I don't currently have any sponsors. I don't currently have any partnerships. I'm just kind of like a lonely art blogger gal all off on her own in the wilderness. I buy all these things out of my own pocket. And if you love art supplies, you guys know that's expensive. You can back me for as little as $2 a month. And that is tremendous for me, especially if a lot of you do it. Um, shoot, I lost my train of thought because somebody was booping me on Skype. I'm so sorry. I'm not even checking it. It just... Um, Dang it. You backing me unlocks great content like my Sketchbox versus Art Snacks reviews. And those are big time intensive reviews because it's multiple videos. And then I write about it on the blog and the card for that should be here right about now. Um, and, you know, I just put a lot of time into those reviews. I want to make sure they're accurate. I want to make sure they're helpful. I want to make sure they're honest. A lot of the other people who review Sketchbox on um, YouTube, they are given their, their boxes by Sketchbox. I've purchased my Sketchbox subscription out of my own pocket. Um, I feel like that help, you know, it helps keep me honest because it's not like I'm being given a, a, a gift. Uh, so if, if I'm going to be harsh, it's because I'm disappointed as, as a customer. And hopefully honest reviews will help them improve their service as well as help customers know whether or not it's right for them. So $2 a month gets you access to that. If all y'all guys contribute $15 a month with this, which is such a low goal, such low hanging fruit, really like seven of, no, eight of y'all about approximately because Patreon does take money out of it. Um, uh, if, okay, if nine of you guys, pretty sure nine would be it. If nine of y'all contributed $2 each, I would hit that $15 goal in no time. And I know more than nine of you guys enjoy this. And I know more than nine of you guys read my blog, which, oh yeah, the card for that should be here right about now. And if you're on like some other device, like your PlayStation or Amazon Fire or your phone, um, it's Natto Soup. N-A-T-T-O-S-O-U-P dot blogspot dot com. Been doing that for six years. So there's a lot of content there that I think you guys will enjoy. Um, so, yeah, the TLDR for that is uh, consider backing the Patreon because it would help a lot. And it would allow me to produce even more fantastic content. And I send out pretty cool physical rewards. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I'll talk to you later. Have a good day. Bye.